Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting the series Python for Beginners. A few videos on the introduction part we have already covered and I hope those videos were helpful. Today we will be talking about various mathematical functions available in NumPy. In general, NumPy is a very powerful technique and for all the numerical calculations, there is only one library which is very important and that is NumPy and because of that we are covering so many videos on NumPy. Further, it is very difficult to cover all the mathematical functions those are available in NumPy in a single video because there are various mathematical functions available. So we will be making multiple videos on this. The purpose of making short videos is you learn about the topic and then you can practice it so that your learning becomes very easier. Now let us proceed with, so we have already learned how to define an array. So let us define an array, say a equal to np dot array, you know this. So let me define say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, what I do is, I take another cell and define another array, say np dot array. Any arbitrary, say we start it from 6, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you have to run the cells. So this is your A, this is your B. I have also mentioned. If you just write A, your A will be printed. So this is very trivial now. So even if I skip it, you can now understand. So A and B we have defined. Now initially we start with a very simple example how to add this to. So this is the simplest one. Say we define another variable C where we define np dot add. We were adding a and b, so a comma b. So let us print it. So you see, it is adding the number six plus one, giving you seven. Seven plus two, giving you nine. Eight plus three, giving you eleven. And the last one, nine plus four, giving you thirteen. Not only that, you can have arrays of multiple dimensions. Suppose we have an array of say two dimensions say again we have three four five six say we have another row say six seven eight nine and for defining this we have to give another box bracket all those things we have already covered so in b also suppose we have multiple rows say in the second row we have say 0 1 2 3 arbitrarily i am taking say this one is 4 5 6 7 so now again you have to run the cell so now you have two dimensional arrays having multiple rows and column now again if you run this add so this is so powerful you can see all the elements it's a kind of one one mapped elements are being added say six one giving you seven randomly you take suppose this five you have here two so this is giving you seven so i have given the example for three by three matrix but the, this is possible to do this kind of summation for say n by n and n could be any number say you have lakhs of numbers in a matrix and you want to do addition of two matrices. This is quickly possible. So this is the power of NumPy. Now we'll be talking about some more functions. So let's talk about multiplication as we have done. We are done with addition. Say in the D array, we'll be defining multiplication. So multiplication, multiply. So you can see there is an operator multiply or function you can say we want to multiply a and b and we are storing it to d and we want to plot d 
mean the print d so you can see what's happening each numbers are getting multiplied say first two numbers it was 1 and 6 so the multiplication is 6 then 2 and 7 so it should be 14 the second number yeah it is 14 here so you can actually do multiplication also two individual elements so every one to one mapped element you want to have a multiplication so simply you can use np dot multiply so this is a very powerful thing now if we move ahead so you have np dot divide also suppose e we divide uh, np dot divide you see yeah divide is there so a by b so a and b we we'll let us print e yeah so you can see division is done here it is coming infinite because something by zero is coming but still it is calculating so this is the power of numpy and also python so it is getting a number one by zero or something by zero but still it is calculating and telling you there is some discrepancy and that's why it is infinite here so in python we have to deal with large data files where you can have multiple infinite number sometimes you have n a n which is which signifies not a number so there are multiple options by which you can deal with those unnecessary infinite or n a n numbers so we'll be discussing all this so uh, till now we are done with add multiply division so those are very trivial now let me talk about something little bit different say we want to have cosine function sine function so say we want to have we have already defined an array a b are defined so now again we are defining say, another array suppose x we are define x equal to np dot array and here we are defining again simple numbers 1 2 3 4 again we are defining not an issue and we are printing x so you can see here you can actually print it so yes it is printed now what I want to do is I want to make a square of all the elements so for that what I will be doing say we define another variable y in y what we are doing np dot power so you can see you have a, an option power power of what power of x i want and let me just print the array some error is there 2 3 positional argument but 1 were given ok okay actually power uh, which power it, we have not defined earlier might be the case so power 2 so we want to do a square so then i guess it will work yeah it's working say 1 to the power 2 is giving you 1 2 to the power 2 is giving you 4 and 3 to the power 3 giving you 3 to the power 2 giving you 9 so you can have any power say power 3 so you can see 3 to the power 3 giving you 27 2 to the power 3 giving you 8 so instead of that you have another options if you uh, want to do square root so obviously it will be say another variable z equal to np dot sqrt of x so let me print it So you can see it is giving square root of all the elements so this is very powerful so you can have multiple numbers and you will be getting square root of all the numbers so we talked about power we talked about uh, sqrt we talked about addition multiplication now let me talk uh, talk something about sine cosine functions suppose we want 
say another variable say a is another variable we want sign function so in p dot sign we can have say x now let us print a a so you can see it is giving you sign of one sign of a uh, not this one x is this one yeah one two three four so it is basically giving you sign of one sign of two sign of three and sign of four so basically uh, here x is in radian what if you want to do a conversion into degrees then you can put it in some other variable say bb say np dot degrees so this is in radian so now it is in AA so I want to convert this AA into degrees so let me just print it uh, it will be the not this bracket this bracket yeah it will work now so you can see now it is in degrees 48 degrees 52 degrees so this is Okay, this is a radian suppose something in radian we want to convert into it degrees uh, if you want to convert the x vector into degrees that will be good because yeah so x was 1 so 1 radian is equal to 57.295 degrees you can check it 2 radians well obviously 2 times of this so this is how you can actually convert your radian to degrees there are other operators where the opposite thing is also possible suppose you want to convert from the degrees to radian so there are there is an option for that also and that is uh, something rat yeah i'll show you suppose Suppose I have a vector again I am defining np dot array say 1 2 3 only 3 numbers now so I am changing my x so this is my x now now what I am doing is suppose this is in suppose this is in degrees and I want to make it in radian so we put it in another variable say cc so np dot dig to rad you can see there is a function dig to rad of what this x so we put x and we print it so you can see it is converted similarly you have the reverse function suppose we are putting it another variable np dot rat to dig rat to dig that is another function so we want to make up cc so we'll be reaching back to x we should because we have reversed back yeah we are reaching back to x 1 2 and 3 so those are very powerful operations uh, we have talked about sine similarly you can uh, you can actually have your cosine also I mean if sine is there suppose np dot cos that will give you cosine of say x now x is 1 2 3 so this is the cosine value similarly np dot sine np dot cos np dot tan gives you np dot tan value okay so let me put it somewhere say say i put it in a variable xx so now this is your xx so what we are getting tan of 1 2 3 is this now if we want to have inverse functions that is tan inverse then what we write we write np dot arc tan of say xx then we go back to 
this we should let us check uh, print yy yeah so we should go back because we are taking a reverse function uh, we have done of xx so this is a tan x so our tan of this one will be this is 1 okay so this is the arctan function now suppose we want to do cos inverse then sim similarly you have to write arc cos for sin inverse arc sin so those are the typical numerical or uh, your trigonometric functions now let us talk something about some different function suppose uh, in engineering Bessel function is important so there is a function np dot i0 say of x so that will give you the Bessel function so x is 1 2 3 and Bessel of those functions 1 2 3 are this this and this so you can have a Bessel function so there are many other functions available uh, you can play around with the complex number so in a single video it is not possible but today we talked about addition we talked about multiplication trigonometric function we i mean the basic functions whichever are there we have talked about yeah we didn't talk about log function and exponential function but this is very intuitive np dot log of say your say x so that will give you the log say x was 1 2 3 log 1 is 0 so it is giving you 0 you can have exponential function say np dot exp that gives you yeah this is the exponential so you know e to the power 1 is 2.718 this is like e value so this is giving accurate result so those things actually very much necessary when you work with numerical manipulations and we'll be using this as I have already mentioned and I am mentioning uh, many times there are multiple other mathematical functions available we'll try to talk about few more in the upcoming video and we will try to cover all the functions available so that this particular playlist become a kind of directory where you can again visit and you can look at whichever you need during your further coding so today uh, with this i stop here meanwhile i request you to subscribe to my channel for more updates